Uh, hello Year 7, um, welcome to this lesson on adding and subtracting fractions. So, um, let's get started. I've got a nice simple example for us to start off with. I'm going to get us to add one fifth and two fifths together and of course we can see it equals to three fifths and you can see I've drawn one fifth here because that's one out of the five little um, sectors and two fifths here because that's two out of the five little sectors and when I add them together I get one two and three fifths when I combine them because it's three out of the five little sectors so the important thing to do when I'm adding fractions is notice I'm adding the one plus the two which gives me the three but I've still got five on the bottom okay I'm not saying three over ten I don't add these two fives together the bottom part just tells us how many so the bottom part tells us how big each of the little parts is and you can see each of the little parts is a fifth and we've got three of them okay so the top one tells us how many we have the bottom one tells us how big they are so I've got three lots of a fifth okay so hopefully that was pretty easy for you so let's look at another example um, have a go at trying to add one half plus three quarters and it might take you a moment to do it so pause the video and show you're working out okay let's check our answer so the first thing we notice is we have a half is shaded like this and three quarters is shaded like this but they're different sizes so we need to think of a way to solve this problem and what we're going to do is we're going to divide them all into quarters so I can't just add a half and three quarters but I'm going to divide my half like this into two quarters aha one two three four and five so I've got five quarters because I said a half is like two quarters and then I've got three quarters and you can see it there two quarters and three quarters and now I know that I've got five quarters or if I want to I could write it as one and a quarter because you can see I've got um, four quarters is one whole and then I've just got one extra quarter and here's my improper fraction and here's my mixed numeral and what I'm looking for here is a common denominator so I want to make the denominator of each of these fractions the same and I'm going to make it four here okay let's try another example so now we're going to be doing five over six minus seven over fifteen so what you need to do first of all is you want to work out the common denominator of 6 and 15 or the lowest common multiple of 6 and 15. Take a moment and see if you can actually think of um, what that lowest common multiple is going to be. The lowest common multiple of 6 and 15. Okay, hopefully you've got it. Did you, um, oh, that's just the question still, the LCM of 6 and 15, but did you see that it was 30? I hope that you did. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to change 5 out of 6 and 7 out of 15 to both be fractions out of 30. So think about this. If I have 5 out of 6, it's going to be something out of 30, but what goes on the top. And if I have 7 out of 15, I'm going to have something out of 30, but what goes on the top? Pause the video and see if you can change these two fractions to numbers out of 30. Have you had a go? Okay, good. Let's see if you got it right. And you got 25 out of 30 and 14 out of 30. And then we can just subtract them and we get 11 out of 30. If you're wondering why that is or having trouble seeing it, if I multiply the 6 by 5, I get to 30. So I've multiplied 6 by 5 to get to 30. So I've also got to multiply the 5 by 5 and that gives me 25. And the same thing here. I multiplied the 15 by something to get to 30 and I want to multiply the 7 by the same thing. So tell me, what do you think I multiplied the 15 by to get to 30? If you said 2, you were correct. And because I've multiplied the 15 by 2, I have to multiply the 7 by 2 as well. 
and 7 by 2 is 14. And did I write 25 there? It looks like I wrote 25 there. I'm just going to make sure that that's written as times 5. 5 times 25 is 125, and that's much too big. Okay, let's move on to the next um, part now. So, one more question for you to do. Pause the video and have a go at this and see if you can get the right answer. And before you start, I just want to give you a hint. Make these into improper fractions before you start doing your working out and you'll find it's a lot easier. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've paused the video and that you've uh, had a go now. So let's take a look at it together. First thing, I made these into improper fractions. 1 and 2 thirds is 5 over 3, and 2 and a half is 5 over 2. If you're having trouble with improper fractions, please make sure you've watched um, yesterday's video and that you've done um, all of the homework and had a, and double-checked any errors that you've made. Okay, so let's now look. Now we've got 5 over 3 and 5 over 2. They're improper fractions, but what I want to get now is I want to get a common denominator. So we're going to look at the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2. And you can do this. This is an easy one. It's 6. And while I was at it, I made this 10 over 6 and 15 over 6. The reason, of course, is if I times 3, what do I times 3 by to get to 6? I times it by 2, so I had to do the same thing to the 5. What do I times the 2 by to get to 6? You can tell me. I mean, I won't hear you, but you can say it out loud anyway. It's going to be a 3, so I multiply the 5 by a 3 as well. And 10 over 6 is just 5 over 3, and 5 over 2 and 15 over 6 are just the same thing. So I could simplify these two and turn them back into this. But now I've written them as fractions with a common denominator, so I can just subtract them. And this is a bit of practice from our negative numbers, so let's see, have a go, see what you get. Did you get negative 5 over 6? And negative 5 over 6 we can't simplify because 5 is a prime number, so there's no factors to cancel out. Alright, I think it must be time for our algebra question. And yes it is, here it is. So we, I want you to do this subtraction, 2 over xy minus 3x over y squared z. Um, please pause the video and have a go and really take your time and try to get the answer out before you keep watching and watch the answer. Okay, I assume that you've paused the video and you've got your answer in front of you, so now you're ready to check it. So first thing I did was I said, okay, x, y, and y squared, z. I want to work out the lowest common multiple of these. And I go, well, x, y, and y squared, z. Well, I know I need to have an x, I know I need to have a y, I know I need to have a z, but in fact I need two y squared, two y's, because I've got y squared there. So the lowest common multiple of x, y, and y squared, z is x, y squared, z, and I've written just x, y squared, z here, x, y squared, z here. And then I've thought to myself, okay, well, if I started with an x, y here, and now I've got an x, y squared, z, well, I must have added an extra yz to this one, or multiplied it by yz, so I had to multiply the top by yz as well, and I got 2yz. Now this one, I started off with y squared z, and I just need to get an x there as well, because this one has an x, and this one doesn't have an x, so the lowest common multiple is x y squared z, and notice that they're the same, and I go, well, what do I need to multiply this by? And I realise I just needed to multiply that by x, so I multiplied the top by x. And you can see here, I multiplied this 2 by yz, this by x, the bottom by yz, and the bottom by x. And then when I look at this, I can go, okay, well, the bottom here now is x, y squared, z, 
and the bottom here is x, y squared, z. So we've got the same denominator and there's the 2yz, 2yz and 3x squared, 3x squared. And then we just combine them on the top of the fraction. 2yz minus 3x squared over x, y squared, z. And we can't simplify this any further. The top isn't actually, there are no like terms up the top, so we can't um, subtract these anymore. And we're done. Okay, guys, so now let's do our favorite part and have a look at the homework. So for homework, I want you to go to the um, Cambridge 8 book again, exercise 4b. But there's only specific questions I'm going to get you to do. You're going to do 3, 4, 7, 8, 15, 16, and 17. And that's because this exercise in Cambridge has got the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division combined. However, I'm only going to be setting the addition and subtraction for um, this lesson, and next lesson we'll do the multiplication and division. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.